hello 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 welcome back to another video if you guys don't know me my name is Daz and today we're in Colorado I'm gonna be taking you guys along with me today I'm gonna be skiing in Breckridge Colorado at the Breckridge Ski Resort it's my first time ever going skiing so this is gonna kind of be like a beginner's guide giving you guys all the information and tips that you need to know if you haven't make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on your post notifications so you don't miss another video when you first arrive at the Breckridge Ski Resort, there are several parking lots that you can use. They are free, we didn't have to pay anything, and they will all take you up to the mountain where you can ski. Another thing to keep in mind is that since you're going to be at a higher altitude, it may be harder to breathe. So just be aware when you go up into the mountains or you do any high performance activities that it may get a little difficult to breathe regularly. Yeah, it's going so fast. Wow. <laughs> oh my god. We're gonna feel a little sick, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm floating. I'm kinda scared. Hold up, hold up. This is cool. This is actually very cool. So now the lift is gonna be open. Like, we're gonna be hanging. Not close. <laughs> this is really fast though. Like we probably went from the lower level to, to this higher level within like not even five minutes. So and then you can also park. They had us park down the hill because there wasn't enough parking um, at the top, but it's a pretty quick ride. So So we just got off the gondola. It was a little confusing because it stopped at like three different peaks, but we just went all the way to, which peak is this? I think this is peak eight. It's about the fourth stop. It's Breck Connect Gondola. So now, oh my God, there's so many people. I'm so excited. Breckridge Ski Resort has cafes, food, bars. If you get tired or you need somewhere to take a break, there's plenty of places and spots to take a seat, sit down, and relax. So after you get off of the gondola, the first thing you wanna make sure that you do is go pick up your lift tickets. Right next to the gondola, you just make the roundabout and it'll say ticket office, so that's where you come to pick up your lift tickets. You can purchase them online as well and just pick them up at the window. And then you go over and get your rentals, which is also right next door to the ticket. It's right over there. So now we're actually going to pick up our rentals. Let's see how this works because I've never done this before. Let's see. Well, these are our lift tickets. And then we're gonna do our rentals. So apparently, before you get your rentals, you need to make a rental reservation. So we're doing that right now. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little complicated when you get here because there's like no direction. But hopefully, after we do this whole like profile and get our rentals, we'll be good to go. But I'll let you guys know what happens. <laughs> So it's like basic information, right? Like your name and stuff like that. Yeah. So when you're filling out your reservation, they give you a choice of what you want to do. So you could pick between skiing, snowboarding, and other gear. So you can pick what you want to do. How does that feel? Your toes up in the front, but not filled? Yeah. A little uncomfortable? It's just snug. Yeah. My good. toe's like scraping against the top. But... Good, good. Cool. You know it's so funny, we haven't even gotten onto the slopes yet and we're exhausted. Like I didn't realize walking in skis and just getting geared up to ski would be such a process. 
this is a whole map of the mountains. So we have all the slopes and everything that you would do. At Breckridge Ski Resort, there are plenty of different slopes and lifts that you can take, but if you are a beginner, do not expect to get on a lift. You can if you want to and feel as though you're experienced enough, but talking to one of the employees, it doesn't seem like they regulate based on skill level. So if you get on an advanced lift and you don't know how to ski or snowboard or how to get off, it will cause an issue with the lift itself and having to get people to stop it. So I would just avoid the lifts altogether if you are a newbie. So we've probably been on the slopes for about like an hour. And I'm not gonna lie, this is really, really hard. Like I didn't expect it to be this difficult. And I feel like the only thing, like, I would definitely recommend if you're gonna come skiing or even snowboarding to get a lesson. Because what we did is we bought a lift ticket. But as beginners, like, are you really gonna get on a lift? But at the same time, I think that's the only ticket that you can get to go skiing. So it's really confusing. But yeah, nobody really tells you what to do. You just get your rentals and you go. Um, but it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty hard. And it's pretty exhausting just trying to figure out like how to move and how to get comfortable in the ski. So I don't even know if I'm gonna get on the baby slopes, but it's definitely an experience. Like the views are amazing, but I would say like be ready to have a workout. Just be prepared, be prepared. It's really funny because when we were getting our ski rentals, the lady that was actually helping us I don't know, she was like, there was so many stories that we were getting about people breaking their hands and their wrists and like just getting injured in general and being beginners. So after getting my rentals and talking to her, it was a little intimidating, but yeah, it's, I would definitely look up how to ski before you come <laughs> to a ski resort. Some tips to know too when you come to the Brookridge Ski Resort is ask employees like what to do they don't give you a lot of direction. The lady was telling me that it's a really touristy town, so people come knowing how to ski, people come knowing how to snowboard and know how it works. But if you're like just a newbie, like you don't know what you're doing, it's very like complicated just getting through, like finding where to go, finding how to get your rentals, all of that. So yeah, just, you know, be aware, maybe do your research before you come and ask people for help, because if not, like you'll just be lost. <laughs> Something too that we didn't know was that snowboarding is actually more difficult than skiing. If you're not on a lift, like right now, you would have to put one foot in and it's just a whole, it's a whole mission. It's really a whole mission, but I'm going to try my best to keep going and I'll let you guys know how long, how long we make it because I'm tired. Conclusion. It was it was an interesting experience. I think that we're done for the day. Honestly, just the energy and the effort that it took to walk up to the slope and practice and figure out how to do it. It took us literally like two hours and then to walk back down and like we're exhausted. It's definitely something that I would recommend trying. I would say go ahead and get ski lessons or snowboarding lessons first in general before even coming to a place like this so you know what you're doing especially for the price our lift tickets were about maybe 150 and then our rentals were about 70 dollars 70 to 80 dollars we spent like around a good 230 240 for this whole experience is it worth it I mean, it's one of those things that you have to do when you come to Colorado, but again, to make the most out of your experience, I would definitely recommend looking online and seeing what type of lesson bundles you can get. The lesson bundles usually come with a two hour lesson, whether you want it to be in the AM or the PM, rentals and a lift pass. So for what I paid for 230 to struggle and figure it out on my own, you can pay an extra $30 to get your own instructor. They usually range between groups of three to six, and you can have a whole different experience.
One last thing I do want to mention before thinking of coming to ski at the Brookridge Ski Resort is that you can make your reservations online for the day that you want to come ski and buy your lift tickets. But because it still is kind of COVID time, and I did know somebody who lived down here in Colorado and they said that buying the reservation or the lift ticket on the day can be more risky because you might not have a guaranteed spot and that some people come all the way out here and they're limiting the amount of people that are able to ski because of COVID. So that's just something that I would keep in mind and to book in advance online. That's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions at all, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. I'm gonna be staying in Colorado for a little while. So I'm definitely gonna have more videos coming your way. So stay tuned. Don't forget to turn on your post notifications so you don't miss another video. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe and support your girl and I'll see you guys next time.